Welcome to Lawmen, a podcast about local legends and obscure curiosities from days of yore. I'm Alistair Beckett King, connoisseur of blasphemous and exquisite pleasures that mortal man was not meant to know. And I'm James Shakeshaft, also an Amazon Prime customer. This tale features a deputy law person telling a tale from Lincolnshire about Lincoln Cathedral in Lincoln. Welcome, another deputy lawman. Should we go? Should we I think begin? it's time to introduce. I mean, this is this has been one of the best intros we've done so far. I it's think. been the longest <laughs> intro, and you've really been winging it. I think it's it's time to introduce uh, a deputy lawman, John Long. Thank you very much for having me. I didn't realise I was getting deputised as part of this. It's Um, it's a limited deputisation. Oh, just for the last duration, but you get to wear a a star-shaped badge that says Deputy Lawman. My jurisdiction is this podcast studio. This this small, tiny sound recording booth. Red curtain lined. But also, an American pointed out who was listening to the podcast that the the hilarious Lawman pun doesn't work in an American accent because it it doesn't work with a rhotic accent because they say... Lawman and Loreman. Loreman. So, Lore. so it doesn't work. So, okay. Oh, <laughs> it's a bit too late now. Sorry, America. I think they're they not, accept, I'm not they accept that. <laughs> I'm not sorry. <laughs> they accepted it, but I secretly was. You also, back, you went, yeah. hey, hey, it also hey, doesn't hey. work in Ireland, Scotland, or the West Country. So, really, it's not a str- it's not a strong international pun. <laughs> okay, well, it works for me and my accent. So, yeah. for, the, for the duration of this, it works mm. in. And, and you, it. you are from. I'm from Lincolnshire. Lincolnshire! Yeah, I don't really have a Lincolnshire accent because it doesn't really, well, it's not got a very good accent. What is, because when I, I was trying to think about what I know about Lincolnshire and I think, I think of farming, but I also visualise, you know, the start of SimCity before you've done anything. That's very That's much That's what I imagine. <laughs> yes, but SimCity is not just ever good at for, contours or, or hills or yeah, valleys. I always used to flatten mine out. Uh, yeah, and So that's yeah, probably exactly. why, just a colourless isometric square is mm-hmm. what I'm, is that what it's like? It is, yeah, basically. Well, the part I'm from is anyway, the fens, that's just, it's flat. It's irrigated. So it's like, they call it South Holland because it's just like yeah in the Netherlands it's completely flat they have all these what they call dikes now they don't have this around the country it's basically a ditch at the side of the road where and we have that everywhere so the point where we moved to London I assumed everyone had heard that and that's what that word meant I know two things about Lincoln Mm -hmm. green sausage Lincoln green Lincoln green yeah and Lincoln sausage. What do you know about Lincoln Green? What do you know about it? <laughs> <laughs> who's, to- who's been talking about? Is that is that not allowed to leave the county? Uh-oh. I think we, we you, Lincoln- you mentioned if you want anything cut, cut it. <laughs> I, think, I think for your own safety, mate, you need to cut <laughs> having any knowledge about. Is Lincoln that Green. like the Dykes thing? It has a different. It's sort of <laughs> totally a totally reverse... different meaning. It's really. Oh no, no. Think Lincoln Green Lincoln. is people. Is that the situation? <laughs> yeah, is Lincoln, that what you guys are hiding? Lincoln people are actually made from reconstituted people, <laughs> and they, that's hence the sausage. Yeah, oh. sausages. Yeah, they've got herby kind of sausages. They make sausages. And, um, yeah, that's all you really need to know. Is Lincoln Green a thing, or have I made that I've up? never heard of Lincoln Green. I'm have you even about. heard of Lincoln Green? Lincoln Green is not something that anyone really takes away from Lincoln Green. And it's not something that's widespreadly known or anything, you know. But it is a real thing. Well... You're looking at me like I have actually blown something wide open. <laughs> well, t- tell me what you know about it. I, I have heard the words Lincoln Green, and I presume that it's a colour. Mm, yeah. Isn't it what like oh, I thought it was Robin a place. I was thinking it was a place, and I'm thinking there, there is a Lincoln. Like I'm thinking of a park. I was thinking maybe could call, but I don't know of any story it, related to it. But you're thinking of a colour. Is it just a colour? Right, okay. Now you mention it, the Rob, sort of the Robin Hood green. Maybe you're. Maybe I thought Robin Hood Lincoln no, green. No, that's Nottingham. Uh, I wouldn't call it Nottingham green. They imported it. He was from Lincoln. They yeah. stole it from Lincoln. <laughs> from another thing. From yeah. Robin Hood was actually from Nottingham. He was from Lincoln originally. And he but... didn't give it to the poor. <laughs> no, he just colour. kept it all. Yeah. Um, you know, I would say Lincoln. Well, their football team play famously and. Red, yes. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if Lincoln Green is a thing. I sort of want to say now that that mystery's been solved, but I'm not, I'm not sure it has. It's raised more questions than it. Now that, now that what may or may not have been a mystery has been further confused. If anyone, if anyone has heard of Lincoln Green, help me out. <laughs> I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Help me out, mate. I'm going to grow up near that. Um, now, now that we've cleared that up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Do you have a story for us from Lincolnshire? I do, I do. We used to go... Lincoln, I'm not from Lincoln, I'm from the sort of farmlands, but 
uh, and Lincoln was nearby. We used to go to Lincoln for school trips, specifically to Lincoln Cathedral. So Lincoln itself is, is, is an alright city, but in the middle of it, it's sort of pride and joy is its cathedral, which is on top of a steep hill, which is a steep hill, it's beautifully named. And it's very, they've kept it like an old cobbled street with little things, and it leads up to the cathedral. So it's quite impressive. You go there, and there was once upon a time when it ha- used to have a gigantic spire that was, and for like 200 and something years, it was the tallest building in the world. So it was, tall, mm. it was like 500 feet or something. What? And for a long time, it was that, it was the tallest building in the world until sort of 15 something, it blew down. Because it was just, it was far too high. <laughs> Basically, it they was made of paper. Yeah, they went, they went all out it. And, and then they built one out of straw. I think, <laughs> if I <remember> <laughs> they did, and then eventually that blew down. Um, they uh, and so it's sort of I like it because I like anything that used to be very amazing and has since fallen from. Glo- I was obsessed with Gaza when I was growing up, but oh. Gaza in my era <laughs> was way past his prime. Like but I Rangers like that. Era. It was a once upon a time when they and there's still glimpses of it, but it's you know it's not what it once was. Yeah. Well, and, as soon as you as soon as you said it, I, I was just thinking this this cathedral is, is very much the, the Gaza of religious architecture. It, it, of course it is yeah. because it was yeah it was the tallest building in the world for 230 something years. And then it was now, on TFI Friday, yeah. week in week out, week in week out, I really I, loved it. Wasn't it St. Five Bellies? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, didn't or have a it? novelty hit with Fog on the Tyne is all mine. <laughs> <laughs> I think all mine, all mine. It was well, tragically left out of that World Cup as well. The, uh, the cathedral, the cathedral, yeah, 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 yeah. Cups, But what was really interesting is when they printed the um, the sticker book of the cathedrals, <laughs> they so thought he was going to be picked, yeah. the cathedral, that it was including all the stickers, <laughs> as they often are. Anyway, so it was once it was once a top player in the world of buildings, let alone cathedrals, mm. and now I mean it's the third, it's still the third biggest cathedral in the country, you know, behind the old uh, even St. Paul's it blew York. Down. Um, if floor space, this is uh, now I'm, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm switch, I'm, I've switched, I've switched categories only there. Top trumps. <laughs> <laughs> I've made a lateral move. Because it fell presumably yeah. right down, well, like... and now it's long rather than <laughs> tall, and they just thought we'll just do it on the side. Yeah, it's like Gazi. When you when you lose your pace, you have to get creative and come up with other aspects of yeah. your game. And so they went with floor space. But what is but what I like about it anyway was that does they had so they have a little they have a, a story about it anyway about the Lincoln Imp is their story, which is why the Lincoln Imp is on. It's like it's the mascot for the local football team. You're yeah. saying Lincoln Imp as if it's a phrase that we should just accept. Well, like, it's as famous like as Lincoln, Lincoln Green. Green. Yeah, it's as famous as Lincoln Green. <laughs> Have you what not heard of the Lincoln, Lincoln Imp? Imp? No, Lincoln. I've never, I've never heard of. The, I mean, I only really heard about Lincoln five minutes ago. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. The Lincoln Imp is that what's well, an imp is obviously like a little devil creature, so it's where we get impish from and things like that. And it's a sort of sprightly kind of polter, almost like a poltergeist, really. And it's um, it's a gargoyle basically that's very high atop in the Lincoln, but there's only one of them, and it's a bit weird that that's there. So there's a story behind it which comes from that time. Now the story I have is actually I've been researching it, and then actually I've added stuff to it. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've really embellished it in my memory. Well, that, one of the nice things is when there's sort of genuine contemporary folklore, like things that you were taught in school but aren't in any of the books. Yeah, that means they've evolved since. They were yeah. Books, so. yeah, I don't know who added the bit I've got onto it, but it's in no part of Wikipedia. <laughs> but it's good. I'll tell you my version, the one I heard anyway, growing up, um, was that there was, so in that sort of period where it was this iconic building, so in the sort of uh, 13th century, I guess, or 12th century. So it was a big deal, this building. And if you can imagine people obviously, you know, around the fens, which is below seaboard and this tiny thing, Lincoln could be seen from miles away. It's so flat you couldn't, you know, see for miles anyway. So Lincoln is the tallest building in the world. It's a huge thing. And suddenly um, all these things started going wrong there and there were all these different stories about uh, people's hats being knocked off. Seems to be the one <laughs> recurrent theme that everyone can agree upon. <laughs> There's all loads of different accounts about how mischief was caused by these imps, basically. So the devil released these little imps to play in the cathedral. I mean, it's hard to imagine how hats could be knocked off in a place famous for not having anything that could block wind. Yeah. It's, it's just inconceivable. Wind is really annoyingly adopted in this as if it's something... Yeah, because the, the part of the story, when I looked it up, there was like, and they came in with the wind. And after yeah. the... Well, so it, it mentions in the background that, by the way, it was really windy. When it was and then windy. also yeah. someone's hat fell off. What? When it was windy, the imps would knock the hats off. Yeah. The imps would bring smells from different places <laughs> with them and go... <laughs> yeah, they made a noise. Yeah, yeah. They, they whispering noise. But for ages, there was always stories about you go into Lincoln Cathedral and there would be mischief. I basically think what it is is that people, it's 
bored children. Because all of the things they mention are things that you can imagine, you know, when you're in a church and there's a wedding and there's a baby there who you're trying to keep your eye on but goes off and causes it. It's just all boring things like that. Like, oh, someone knocked over a, you know, an old pulpit or something was pushed over. So basically it's... Like, a, big... like a baby would. Somebody did it in the chancel. <laughs> <laughs> and the cloisters are a mess. So they were devils sent by... Uh, well, they were little mini devils sent by the devil to cause mischief in this church. And there was always reports of things basically mainly hat related for about 200 years <laughs> 200 years no not really but it was basically that's what the, the story all was there was these little creatures that were in there and um, the spire as I said got knocked over that was, that was wind related oh <laughs> big, so what they've done big so, it seems like a massive escalation to me from the imp <laughs> to go, I don't think this hat business is getting much coverage here. Clearly, people aren't taking us seriously as a folklore. And we want to be remembered in history books. So they really ramped it up, and they knocked over this spire. Which is very much the hat of the church. It's very much the hat of the church. If we're looking at scale... <laughs> oh, the cathedral, rather. Sorry. Just zoom out, yeah. and suddenly that's what they've done. They've just, they've just thought on a bigger level. And um, this knocked it off, obviously, Lincoln off its highest building in the world so obviously at that point someone had to intervene an angel that caught the attention of the angels and the angels uh froze the lincoln imp who was hiding in the arches because it's the only one of its kind there's angels everywhere in stone and different things like that and then just there's one imp so he's trying to hide in there got caught turned to stone and he's still there but there was two of them and the other one is apparently very apologetic and outside and the guy I remember telling it to us said and and still to this day in the courtyard you can hear the wind and that's the whispering apologies of the other room. And, and that's true. You go to this courtyard, there will still be wind. As if <laughs> <laughs> the wind remaining is somehow very spooky. Like, he's right. This courtyard, it is very windy. Yeah, but, but you'll only hear the imp's windy message when it's windy. <laughs> <laughs> so to, oh, wait. Okay, wait. No, it's not actually that windy no. today. Wait, we'll, 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 we'll listen for it. We'll check the weather. <laughs> we'll there for a good couple of hours. And yeah, basically, in a cathedral, which is, I think one of the, mo- the, I, the main features of a cathedral is that they are windy. There's also the Jesus stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's and the hats. I do think about that when I think about cathedrals. You're true. Yeah, there are a lot of hats. Um, but when I think about hats, I think about hats being knocked off and I'm back to wind immediately. Mm. <laughs> so, yes. So, um, but the Lincoln Imp itself, that was, I only heard the thing about the spire being knocked off. And that actually, when I heard that story going, the imps were released and they caused havoc and they, were, and they blew down the uh, spire and then the angel came in. But when I researched it, that's no relevance to the spire knocking down and the imp are completely separate. No one had made those connections. All of the law seems to be on it is that causes a bit of mischief and knocked off a few hats and were turned to stone. You're like the maverick detective who thinks the two cases are linked and yeah. everybody else is saying, come on, they're not. <laughs> a hat gets blown off, a building gets blown down, they're different things. <laughs> and I'm there with like a cork board and string. Yeah, just red string. No, 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 man. Lincoln. Windy yeah. blowing, it's the exact same MO. <laughs> <laughs> it's escalating, it's a classic escalation. <laughs> yeah, I feel like there must have been a middle thing between yeah. hat and spire. You don't just go from hat to spire, do you? Yeah, you've had Hat's your fine. Where did this come from? It's acting out, basically. It's mm. the imps graduating to full devilhood. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like when you get like a monkey, when it's a, like a chimpanzee as a pet, when it's a baby, and they think, oh, how adorable. It's so like, cheeky. And then suddenly you realise that full, they can tear apart a human being mm. and they don't realise that. And so every single chip, chimp ownership <laughs> story ends with, oh, it was lovely. And then he tore my husband's arm off and then we had to give him to the you know, yeah. zoo. And then an angel turned him to stone. <laughs> yeah. It's sort of same with Gaza, really. It's the same story again. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Playful, 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 playful. And then... Oh, Oh, dear. oh yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Domestic you can't violence. say that in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you seem so racist. Yeah, Actually, yeah. Lincoln, that would have been no cause for concern, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. That, was, yeah, that would have been in his pro favour, going, "Oh come on, he is quite racist though. <laughs> let him, let him now." I know he blows people's hats off, but some of the stuff he says is it, is, is this imp? Are the imps still like, even though they've put, we've had two turned to stone. Well, this is it. There's the, one to stone, wait. and then there's one. Still left around. It's whispering. Oh, he's it's alive. In, he's still knocking around, around knocking around, and no one can find him. And his name, well, that's why I think his he's, he's, he's gone into football mascot work since. Because obviously, <laughs> there's not as much work in wind as there used to be. Um, so he's gone into, basically, he's one of those characters you see at a football match. Giant yep. red thing. So is there, is there an imp? Yeah, now? he's called Poacher, and he is the local mascot of the Lincoln team. And he is, a dev- I met him, well, the guy who played him. <laughs> and when I, I was a mascot when I was 11, as my, I used to go to Lincoln City every week or every other week. And, um, um, 
my 11th birthday present. Slightly too old for this, but you know those little kids that come on the thing. 11, yeah. bit too, bit too bit old, too isn't old. it? Yeah. I asked for it when I was about well. eight, and uh, and it didn't happen. <laughs> and then because uh, the waiting list was very long, I think. Yeah. I, I th- so I must well, I must have asked for it later than that, nine or something. The waiting list was about a year or so. So I was just a bit too old, and uh, it was me and a bunch of seven-year-olds. Uh, but beforehand, they go all oh, meet the players, and here, and they go, and this is Colin. He's poacher, and it's just a, a middle-aged bloke going, "All right, how you doing?" And that kind of ruined it for me because <laughs> for years I was like, "Oh, I love him." I'd hugged him. I got things for him. And that did that to you as an eleven-year-old. Think of the poor seven seven-year-olds tortured by it. Yeah. Why would they not introduce him as poacher? Why would they? It was before the game because the bigger the, one of the part of the big thing was that you get to before the game you get to come meet the players as they arrive and you get to whatever. Have so your get dreams to... shattered. Yeah. Was he in costume? <laughs> no, no, he, no right. he was. Okay, that would be even worse. Like meeting <laughs> poacher, it, but they call him put, Colin. I think if ever he, as he said, he said he's always um, someone. <laughs> I think, I think someone, one of the parents might have raised... You could have worn the costume, mate. <laughs> and and it was, he was saying about how it's very hot. I think they get into the costume right before they have... No second before they have to. But um, I don't know if it was Colin, but they, but he, they definitely told us his name. His Why like, human t- name. Yeah. And Why do that? His imp name. <laughs> this is Peter. I mean, Spider-Man. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to know. Um, but he is the um, so the Lincoln Imps that's what they're sort of known as not a very successful football team but weirdly there is a very successful team called the Lincoln City Imps or the Lincoln Red Imps that they play in Gibraltar there is a small Gibraltar league to give you an idea how small it is obviously as a league they've got one ground which all 22 teams play in yeah. <laughs> not simultaneously I mean I, I'm not a football expert but oh yeah it's like, a sort of, like an admin nightmare it's like multi-ball pinball that's how they, <laughs> <laughs> they release all the teams <laughs> on the hour every hour it's a 12 hour game it's really I, weird I, I tell you what though if they did the World Cup like that I'd watch it yeah. uh, it goes on for a long time doesn't it but that's true. just get it all done in one go mm-hmm. like a royal rumble of football <laughs> teams being introduced <laughs> every 15 minutes <laughs> here goes Lincoln City <laughs> here goes the next one <laughs> Oh, it's the Rock. I don't know why he's. Yeah. <laughs> but they, um, but what they've done, they've got all their teams. But a couple of them have just co-opted English teams. So there is a Manchester United. They had to change their name recently. Now they're called Manchester something else. But they were called Manchester United Rangers, a separate team. And they were the only other team they had. Manchester United. They were going to take that team, the famous football mm. team. And the other team they took um, was Lincoln City. There must be someone from Lincoln involved in it. So they've got all these different team names. But in and amongst them, for no reason, there's a Manchester United and there's a Lincoln City Red Imps. And the Lincoln City Red Imps. Conversely to our rubbish Lincoln in England, in this bizarro world, they are the best team. They've won 22 leagues, the last 14 of which were consecutively. They recently represented Gibraltar in the Champions League. So they, they've played the Champions League, which Lincoln would As never Lincoln. watch. So they've taken that name and really run with it. The Lincoln City Red Imps were in the Champions League. They were in the Champions wow. League. So it, it's carrying the name to, you know, to an international level. But my problem is they'll go, what a cool logo, what a great name. Let's look up this legend. And as I've explained to you, it being mostly wind-based, it's not going to draw the tourists in to Lincoln in the way we really <laughs> no. want to. But what I love about it is, like Lincoln shirt itself, it's just a, a bit crap. I think it's time for the scores now. Yes. So what is your first category for us, John Long? Um, so the first will be naming. You know the name? Naming. Yeah. All right. There are one name. One name? Colin? No, two. <laughs> there's, Poacher. There's, there's the Lincoln Imp, which is a name. That's a... Yeah, there's there's Poacher, Poacher, the name of the Imp. There was Colin, the name of the guy who played This poacher. is all the same thing. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, Names sure. of the same and thing. And also you specifically said you didn't know for certain that Colin was his name. Yeah. <laughs> Colin was a stab in the dark, that's true. The, the names uh, Lincoln City Red Imp being used twice, but for different... Forms. So that's the same name twice. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, but with different meanings. Different meanings, though. Synonyms. So you've got a sort of Tower of Hanoi of just like the same thing on top of it. So yeah. getting slightly less impressive each time. Yeah. And Lincoln Cathedral, which is... Mostly the same. It's got name. a lot of different names, which is quite interesting. Oh, does it? Yeah, but they're all basically variations of the same thing. <laughs> Are you going to make some <laughs> no? There's just loads of like the, the list of the different names is like there's loads of ver- different variations on it being something about Saint Mary's. It's, it's Saint Mary's Church, but at one point they even refer to um, Holy, Saint Mary of Lincoln, but that's definitely not where she's from. <laughs> 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 not that one. Oh uh, yeah, our oh, beloved Mary of Lincoln. I was like, I'm, I can't see how it could be higher than a two. I'm afraid for no, no. because it is the same name at least twice. How would how would you score well in this category? By having good names in yeah, your story, John. I'm like, sorry. Imagine a good right. name. Right, I get you. Just having like, like Gwendolyn's. Yeah, just yeah. good yeah, quality names. that's true. Just to pluck a... I don't know if I can use a person's real name, but I'm going to use a person's real name that I generally have to write emails to nowadays. Uh-huh. His name's Mungo Penfold. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not even a myth. 
<laughs> that's just like work. That's five out of five right there. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. I almost feel like we should give John an extra point for Mungo Penfold. <laughs> Which is the name of the imp. Yeah. I have to write emails, dear Mungo Penfold. Mm. I don't know, I use his full name. <laughs> yeah. And cool. he has to reply to James Shakespeare. So, uh, you know, fair's fair. fair that's enough. made me realise that, um, f- again, feedback to the first series of the podcast, People don't know which one of us we our voices are from the picture. Oh yeah, but, and I because I always thought, well, I've got red hair and my name's Alistair, so it's obvious. But then James is also a Scottish name. Yes. So and James is my middle name. So oh. yeah. Oh. People have written in. Uh, people have written in. One person <laughs> said something on the internet once, and they thought that this voice was his voice. Imagine this coming out of his face. It'd be ridiculous. There is no correlation between. You realise it when you see radio. Did you used to like radio people before mm. you saw them? Yeah. And if you listened to them for a long time before you saw them, they they always <laughs> sounded a lot thinner. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they were when the shows start, obviously. Yeah, suppose, yeah. But you see them twenty years later. Uh, so I, I think at best it's a three out of five for naming, no, and yeah, really it's... it's two out of five and an extra one for Mungo Penfold, who's doing a lot of work in your corner. Did the angel have a name? They didn't even know the, the angel. The, the angel, angel which came out of a, which came out of a Bible in some versions of the story. That's slightly interesting that it came out of a oh, Bible. Oh, popped out a Bible. But that's good. That's like a the only slightly interesting element they've tried to add into it. That was like, it came out of a book. Yeah. Like Jesus. Well, considering that the rest of the story was about a gargoyle that came to life and the place is full of angels made of stone, you'd have thought, no, no, no. I have to take it to task here mm. because, mm. strictly speaking, it's not a gargoyle, I think. It's not. It's, it's a, a, it's a, it's a grotesque. A it's a grotesque. Yeah. Quite right. yes, absolutely. Oh, is this indoor, outdoor? A, a gargoyle has water. Water, it's a fountain. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. The yeah. origin is the same as gargoyle, I think. Mm. Well, well, well. Um, it has to be thank a, you. They thank are you. reminding me what gargling was. An example was. of what gargling was. I was, 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 was looking right at you yeah. when you did it as well. It really threw me. <laughs> and so, I, I mean, obviously, it's, uh, it would be churlish of me to detract points for that. No, but fair I'm enough. tempted. Okay. But because he named something wrong. Yes. And he misnamed you, something wrong. And category, here we are scoring I mean, the category. I know. I, know I should have been careful. I've already put my, my money on three out of five, though, so I feel like okay. I can't take anything back. Okay, we'll keep it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll write it down. It feels like a, such a hollow victory. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll inscribe that in the ledger. What mm. is the next category? The next category is supernatural. Supernatural. Yes. yes. It's an extremely supernatural story. I mean, how could how could someone's hat just come right off yeah, their head? Like... And, and I know what you're thinking. Did the per- the woman hold, wearing the hat take it off herself? That was my first thought. No. Mm. What? She is not even involved in the equation. Oh wait. The a minute. hat goes from her head to the floor with her not. Making any action? Did she go upside down at any point? No. Well, I don't <laughs> she remains stationary. What? I don't know. <laughs> for the, throughout the entire process, what, could what? a second person have lifted? No, no, the no, no. Off? I know. I know what you're thinking. And no people in leotards like you sometimes see in shadow, like public yeah, theatre. Yeah. Nothing like that. Uh, well, it has to be an imp. It has to be supernatural. I think we've yep. well, once you've ruled out every possibility, then mm-hmm. the only thing that's left, no matter how impish, <laughs> as Sherlock Holmes once wrote. Um, <laughs> It yeah. has to be the truth or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or something. Yeah, he famously said that again. I hate it when people leave that off. It's like when they leave off the end of the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> and say the full thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I think it's five out of five. <laughs> yeah, it's just supernatural. How could we, how yeah. could we argue? There you go. Uh, oh, what's the next category? <laughs> Wind. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather wish mm. I hadn't. Yeah, wind category. Yeah, you've sort of blown it. Like, you're not wanting to do a wind pun intentionally, but I think you have. It, it, cathedrals. I, it's <laughs> you. We in think, the cathedral. I, I don't think we've ever done zero out of five. But I feel like <laughs> there is either a, a lot of wind or absolutely no wind in this story. Um. Yeah. Well, wind wasn't around until a lot later. Than when was it brought in? Fifteenth century, I think, wasn't yeah. it? Well, the early wind farms early wind were farms. like producing yeah, it, but in an artisan way. From Holland, way. they bring it. in yeah. the windmills. That's when the windmills Those, came. The, the up. They generated the wind because they, what they used was they were they were like we we we're grinding a lot of. Um, corn and wheat while we're doing this and then they added the thing and realised they could generate wind at the same using the same mechanism of, of crushing well I, I think for me it feels like a, a 3 out of 5 on the grounds that what you just said was <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have to believe that but I think it's clear what I said yeah the like great the... is the word he said there but <laughs> yeah, he doesn't, I, I he doesn't want there's, to there's not a swear word that means the absolute truth as far as <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. The dogs. What was it you said? I can't remember. Anyway, anyway yeah. So you said it was great. Yeah. yeah. All right. well, so I think because we've got... Three out of five for being clearly true. Yeah. We, of course. <laughs> we'll bleep that. <laughs> you can't just keep bleep. Just as you edit it, you can't bleep everything I say as if I'm swearing all the time. Well, no, because we've got chatty wind, though, haven't we? Because the wind talks, whispers. Cause you, and you've got... In the legend, they did sort of get themselves out of jail by mm. saying... 
the 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 hat removing imps turn up when it's windy i would all encourage everyone to look up there's a video from the lincolnshire echo they put on youtube on their brief foray into youtube videos of um of like trying to uh, uh talk about the lincolnshire imp story and they got a guy to talk about it and he is uh, just yeah again mentions me the hats come up as you might imagine <laughs> but the, the video of it he and he even does end with and uh you know, you can still hear him. You can still hear him. But the best thing about it is there's it's very close up shot of just his uh, shoulder and head. And then after a while of just that shot for about 30 or 40 seconds, just towards the end, they think we need to mix this up for just for two seconds. They just cut to his hands, just gesticulating something <laughs> very close up and then back to the face for the full interview. <laughs> what that means is he said something racist. And they've had to they've had to patch together two bit two not racist bits where he and they were like how are we gonna we've only got the one shot he was just quoting some of the racist things the imp used to say yeah. and so they just patched it together with a little bit of hand gesticulating or noddies they call them when you go to the interview and yeah. going who goes ooh you see this this story because I've cut all the racism out actually there's not much to it when you cut the racism away <laughs> the imp used to do the hats I mean that's a word I've basically replaced a word with hats. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it sounded a lot more innocent now. I think we could go. I think we could go, go a four. All right. I think we could go a four for wind. Four yeah. out of five. For, okay. For wind. That's very generous of you. I agree. <laughs> I, I agree. I, I love the way you score each other on this podcast <laughs> as well. Like you really take each other to task. Good detective pair, you two. I, I thought. I've always thought we'd make a good detective pair. Are you interested in being a detective's assistant? Wait, because I'm not, I'm not competing for the top spot. You famously <laughs> appear to be from a different time period. Oh, am I a ghost that helps you solve crime? Randall, get in. <laughs> Can't believe I got hop cooked. Again. <laughs> Again. <laughs> this is always happening to me. <laughs> yes, well, thank you very much for it. I'll take that. Okay. Uh, what is your next category? Um, my next category is, um, I'm going to call it Gazanus. It's about fall from grace, fall from glory, fall from once, oh. once amazing things. To have what? peaked. To have peaked. Yeah. Because yeah. I, have, I haven't got any stats here, but it feels to me, as a non-football fan, like this, this one has been... 80% football and Gaza related yeah, well, folklore. To be honest, I'm not massively into football, but sort of surrounding thing about it. So finding out there was a parallel club who were amazing with the same name did intrigue me, Bizarre World. And the, 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 the two Lincoln clubs mm. uh, sort of encompass the duality of Gaza in that one of them is a huge success, <laughs> yeah. and, the, and the you know the other the, there's a, a and the s- sad tragedy. Yeah, yeah, the cathedral's the same as well. Once great and glorious, once and then crap. And yeah. now <laughs> it's not crap now. It's still a great cathedral, but it's just full of faults. There's a thing they tried to do. The architect who developed it was really experimental. So there's loads of weird parts to it, and there's a bit where they tried to make this. There's an illusion made by French architects where if you did all these certain types of arches and. and in a certain order you could create the illusion there was a passageway going through the wall almost and you could see all the way through the cathedral even though it was a solid state and uh, but you can't because you just <laughs> messed up the measurements <laughs> and they've not gone back to alter that at all they're still just what they tried to do here <laughs> it's just it's so you just... Lincolnshire architects make a model first have you thought of that <laughs> they would just... it takes like 400 years to build a cathedral I mean, Gaudi make made a it model. look easy like working as you go it's really hard you should really plan ahead <laughs> it does have one of the four remaining last remaining uh, copies of the Magna Carta you keep, oh. you keep whipping facts out oh. I mean it's got it's got it has still got its moments of being a, a brilliant place but they messed it up they, they lent it to America and America went oh, for a state fair in 1950 and America went this is quite nice we've got a lot of people that want to see it that didn't get around to seeing it at the fair can we keep hold of it and so they just lost it for ages and they were like can we still have it back it took them 50 years they finally gave it back and then Lincoln said well we can't trust the cathedral because you lost it last time so it's now in Lincoln Castle actually <laughs> I wouldn't trust that cathedral with paper as, as, as well like too breezy <laughs> too breezy <laughs> we know what they do with paper exactly it's just going to blow away it's a tragic figure really and that's oh. I think it's four out of five okay Four remaining uh, pieces of Magna Carta, and you give it to an American and state an, fair. Mm, not even a countrywide no, convention. It's in New York, not Chicago, not the Windy City. <laughs> <laughs> They're wise to it. So, what is your? Is it the final category? Are we that was it. That was, the, that was all of them. Lincoln Cathedral continues to disappoint throughout the <laughs> centuries. It is a disappointment. I'm disappointed with it as my local cathedral. I don't know why I've got this weird parent-child relationship with my mm. local cathedral. <laughs> I, I feel like you guys don't have this. I don't know. This is weird. I don't have a local cathedral. I, I've got Durham Cathedral. Um, How do you feel about Durham Cathedral? Uh, well, you can listen to the episode of the podcast. Uh, do oh. your research, John, and you'll find <laughs> out. It's got some amazing stories. Well, it's got some stuff about cows in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a picture of a cow on the it's side of it. It's got a picture of a cow with historically inaccurate garb on the humans, not the humans. Uh, St. Okay. S- St. Mary's Church in Chipping Norton yep. has an uh, octagonal little porch 
I think it's octagonal. Is that the remember. end of that story? <laughs> yeah, but no other. No, like wh- <laughs> however many signs it's got, no other porch has that many sides. Mm. And Princess Diana came and visited specifically. Yeah, wow. for the porch. <laughs> the people's porch. <laughs> <laughs> This next tale takes us away to the windswept wilds of northwest Scotland, aka Argyll. I have a, 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 a tiny wee story for you about the Red Book of Appin. Is it a Scottish story? Is it's, that why it's, it's we? Yes, it is a Scottish story. And Appin is a, a part of uh, Argyll, which is where my mum is from. Mm. And uh, I, I was looking through uh, Westwood and Kingsill's book, uh, The Law of Scotland. And I thought, I'll just check out whether there's anything for, for that area. And there's loads of things for that area. You might know Appin from Robert Louis Stevenson's Kidnapped. Do you know that book? The title ends in an exclamation mark. Yes, because it's a musical. Uh, <laughs> Kidnapped. Uh, I haven't read that, I'm afraid. I, I've got an idea what it's about. Yeah. Yep. Someone gets um, kidnapped. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so that's Appin. And uh, this story, according to... Well, um, Westwood and Kingsale's book attaches it to Castle Stalker, which is uh, a stone's throw away from uh, where my mum grew up. And Castle Stalker is, celebrity name drop, the Castle Arg from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Oh. So it's the real it's the real world castle that played that castle at the end of Monty Python and the Holy Grail. <laughs> yeah. So pretty impressive. It's also uh, one of the seats of the, the the Stuart clan or family, which are the, the the dominant clan of that area of Scotland, and it is the Stuart family that the the Red Book of Appin story is attached to. It, it, that's not the same Stuarts that were royal family, or is it? I don't know. I'll just say yes, and then we we'll let it that in if it was. Yeah. Yes. No. Oh, cool. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, the, the story of the Red Book of Appen. Well, there are, th- there are three versions of it, just about. Um, and the first uh, has only one aspect of it that, that I like, uh, and so I'll just tell you that bit. So, uh, the Red Book of Appen was a, 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 a powerful, uh, magical book of some kind. Its content is disputed, and we'll come to that later. Nobody knows quite how we got a hold of it. One, one of the ways is that uh, a, um, a man had to, to ride out and steal it from a coven of, of witches. And the only thing I like about that is, according to Superstitions of the Highlands and Islands of Scotland, 1900, according to that book, uh, the first guy who got hold of the Red Book uh, rode out to the uh, to the witches' meeting on an entire horse. <laughs> not, uh, not just legs. No. He didn't just roll there on a torso. Uh, <laughs> apparently what that means is a stallion, not a gelding. Because uh, when you think about it, okay. a, a gelding's not an entire horse. Right, no, it's not. Uh, couple of bits missing exactly mm. Fa- and famously apparently uh, an entire horse is uh, unenchantable so that's how he managed to get a hold of this powerful uh. magical book but I don't like that version of the story so here's the other version of the story is he going half a horse the, <laughs> the left <laughs> yeah. well, oh you wouldn't go oh, that's you wouldn't. mucky that's how you divide it down the middle I would have gone I, no, I thought actually I would go with the back yeah and be like getting a piggyback but mm. but with muck in front of you <sighs> Yeah. yeah, you'd need some netting to hold it in. Mm. Anyway, so it's a horrible idea. Mm. The the other version of the story is that there was a young boy who was uh, either in the in the charge of the the Stuart family or he was a, a miller's apprentice, and he wasn't very happy with his lot. And he was sort of kicking his heels one day, just doing pranks, flicking berries at passersby and things. And and a stranger, a charming and mysterious stranger, brackets who is the devil, approached him and said, you don't seem to be enjoying your current job. Would you like to come and work for me? And he said, yeah, maybe. He said, all you have to do is sign your name in this book. And he produced a red book. And the boy said, ah, it feels a bit weird. And he said, it's not weird. Just sign your name in the book. What's wrong with signing it? Sign the book. And he said, "Can I, I need to go and ask my boss or the, my lord um, if, if I can do that. And he said, all right, but you've got to promise to come back and meet me at the Crooked Pool in the Middle Mountain. And so he lets the boy go, and the boy goes and talks either to Lord Stuart or to the village elders, and the village elders go, oh, that guy was clearly the devil, right? But you've promised to go and meet him, so you have to go and meet him. You can't not go now. Um, but here's what you do. They give him either a wand, you, you're doing a very sceptical face. Well, what's the worst that's going to happen if you don't go and meet the devil? If you've broken a promise to the devil. The devil will come and get you. He might be annoyed. Just keep away. <laughs> Ideally, keep away from the devil and just stay home. 
Well, they, they have a better ploy, which uh. is they arm him with either a sword or a, a wand. And they say, you go back there, and the first thing you do is you draw a circle around yourself, uh-huh. and then you're safe. Mm. And so, so he goes to the, uh, to the crooked pool in the middle mountain, uh, and he, he draws a circle around himself, and then the bad guy, the devil, appears. Uh, and he says, oh, you decided to come and work with me? Do you want to sign this red book? Come over here and sign it. And he says, no, I'm not going to move. And so he persuades the, the devil to, to pass him the book. And as soon as the book enters the magic circle, it drops from the, desert, the devil's hands, and he, he grabs a hold of it immediately and doesn't sign it. And the devil really, really wants him to sign it, and he keeps refusing to sign it. And the, uh, once the devil realizes he's not going to sign it, he becomes absolutely furious, and he becomes... He transforms into a grizzled greyhound and then dashes against the circle and then he becomes a roaring bull and then he becomes a, a flock of crows, quote, sweeping above the youth so near that the wind caused by their wings would have carried him out of the circle if he had not clung to the heather. The boy withstands the whole thing, holding onto the book, and then the sun rises and the cock crows and the devil disappears and then he brings home the red book. And here's the thing, the, the, the red book of Appin is either uh, a secret book of satanic ritual magic or a guide to looking after cows. <laughs> because the Stuarts had really good cows. <laughs> loads of really nice cows. And it is believed that the secret to that were the diabolical secrets of the Red Book of Appin and its, and its veterinary mm. cattle-related mysteries. R- right, yeah, just a, a, a hot tips from yeah. the devil for farming. Yes, it is a farming a guide to farming. So, yeah, like animal husbandry for dummies, yeah, animal husbandry for devils. That's pretty much what the book's about. And if, and if you Google it now, it is available on Amazon. Oh. You can buy, a, well, and, and this is nonsense, but you can buy a book that, that purports to be the true red book of Appin, colon, the grimoire of Vlad the Impaler. Wait a minute. Yeah, the famously Scottish man Vlad the Impaler. What? Uh, and it... Uh, even even their description of it says, uh, This legendary Red Book of Appin has been spoken of for centuries, uh, variously theorised as a medical handbook for livestock or a manuscript of devil worship. <laughs> it's presented here in its true form for the first time for £1.24 Kindle, £4.70 paperback. What? The front covers, it's not even red. Oh, they haven't even made that's... the co- cover of it red. What are the reviews? Unenthusiastic. <laughs> One of them said it was just some drawings with no words. Was it just drawings of animals? I... <laughs> it might just be drawings of uh, the, the ministrations that a, a farmer needs to perform sometimes on a cattle farm. Yep. Wow. So that is the story of the the short story of the of the Red Book of Appen. Mm. An, another Scottish wizard. Oh, I forgot one thing. Twist. Oh. The M Night Man twist. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to pronounce it. Mm. Uh, but I said it with confidence. But it's it's one of them things. It's like you get towards the end and you realise you've been wrong the whole way through <laughs> about how you should say his name. Some versions of the story have the uh, the mysterious gentleman who approaches the youth as being Lord Stuart himself. Who, uh, who he yeah, that he himself was the uh, the devilish wizard who carried all these secrets and and wrote the red book. So mm. Mm, that doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> like, oh, he wants to tempt him out of a job. Working for himself. Oh, is he just trying to get him to sign a new contract without reading it? <laughs> and like, he's actually reducing his hours and it's, he's turned it into a zero hours contract or something. I think that's it, yeah. And now we shall score. So my first category for you is naming. R- oh. I said that with more enthusiasm than I should have because no yeah. one's... Stuart, that's a name. Potentially. What do you mean potentially? Well, it's a, yeah, Stuart is a name. It's potentially a name involved in the story. It could he either work for the Stuarts or he worked for... <sighs> What was his other job? Oh, you? here we go. Oh, oh. yep. Oh, yep, he's back, he's back on the case. Hello. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting back onto the horse saddle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've slipped off because it was half a horse. <laughs> I forgot that, um, that the, the same book, uh, Superstitions of the Highlands and, and Islands of Scotland, mm. includes a list of alternative names for the devil. Oh, great. And they are the worthless one. Mm. These are all in Gaelic, but uh, oh, the translation is, yeah. yeah, exactly. The one whom I will not mention. Yon one. That's my favorite one. Yon one, that yeah, yeah. Um, the one big one. That's Billy uh, Connolly. A lot of these are Billy Connolly. <laughs> right, they're also names for Billy Connolly. Um, the one from the abyss. That was Bill Paxton. The big sorrow. The son of cursing. The, mi- the mean mischievous one. The big grizzled one. The bad one. The bad spirit. And Black Donald. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Going my, down Black Donald. My favourite thing, I don't speak Gaelic, but the Dalek, Gaelic version of that appears to be Donald Do, which is like two letters away from Donald Duck. So who who you can you trust? <laughs> Donald Do. That's like a Dr. Seuss character, I think. That genuinely is a Dr. Seuss character. <laughs> well, that's the devil. Mm. So admittedly, we've entered the scoring section, but I'm hoping to slip those in under the radar to avoid a low score. Well, those are all names and they've impressed me much. They're, and they are all oh, names. It's good that Shania Twain isn't scoring this. <laughs> But I am aware that they're nothing to do with the story apart from it's the devil. But then it is the devil, and it's the same book. So it's I, two pages earlier. Five. Five? No. Wait a minute. I no. forgot it was out of. <laughs> I thought it was out of six, six, six. No, four. Yeah. Four, all right. So the next category, supernatural. Yeah, okay. Um, Transmogrification. What? He transforms into all different things. Oh, yeah, he did, yeah. We've got that. We've got a they, magic circle. They got... Worse and worse as it went on. We've like, got a fox. big scary wolf, a bull, some crows. We've got a clansman who is suspiciously good at rearing cattle. That is, that is, that is one element of the story. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got the actual devil, or just a, a very charming person from HR that wants to push through a new <laughs> policy. We've got a crooked pond. How can a pond be crooked? A crooked pond, middle mountain. That should have taken some points away from naming. Crooked Pond, the Middle Mountain. Just middle Mountain. Middle, the Middle Mountain. Say it with a Tolkien-esque. A Tolkien-esque mm. The Middle Mountain. Middle Mountain. Yeah. Mm, it is on, on yonder Middle Mountain. Yeah. Which one? <laughs> Come on. There's three. <laughs> Not doing it all for you. What was it again? Supernatural. Yeah. Supernatural. The devil transforming potentially some wizardry with a wand or something. Yeah, yeah. Oh, or it's, a, it's a... For three. Are you what? Is, I know it, it's the actual it's devil, but not much it. happens to it. He does a little. He does a little trickery. Three, because the book might just be a manual. May God have mercy on your soul. My next cash before you is devilry. Now there's a lot of it. Good because you because it's be really lovely and supernatural and. Well, I because like I, need to I, wanted, I wanted a bit more from the devil. He just said, meet me by a pond on the mountain in the middle. That's how the devil comes in. He's like all pally, he's your mate. He's not. He sounds like a bit of an like an, an aggressive charity mugger <laughs> at the beginning. Like, just they, write your name down. Just sign this petition. Quick, they always approach on. me with like, hey, cool guy, I love your hair. They're not, oh, I don't know what the accent is. They I always do Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, hey, yes, we should hang out maybe after this. <laughs> you want to sign something? Yeah. I thought, when he, when he was like, do you want to come and work for me? And I knew this was leading to a red book. Mm. I thought it was going to be like some sort of, one of those trick questions where he's like, work for me, sure. And then he skins him and makes him the cover of the book. Like, I thought the red book was going to be like, because it was blood, but it's just red. Or just if you buy it on Amazon, yeah. it either has no cover at all because it's a download or it's black. I, I like the idea. I, I just think putting your name in the book, uh, he's trying to get him to do that. And he doesn't do that. I quite like that. Yeah, and the circle The way thing. he tricks the devil. I always think it's nice when the underdog tricks the devil. Yeah, like getting him to put the book into the circle. Yeah, oh, just bring the book over here. I can't see it. I did like that the devil in this story just turned up a little bit far away and was just like, oh, just come over here, mate. Because <laughs> like, as if you went to meet someone in the street and they were like, oh, I'll meet you by the pond. And you just stood at one point of the pond and refused to move. <laughs> you said, by the pond, I'm not going anywhere. Well, why don't we come and sit on this bench? No. <laughs> Like, if it was a guy from HR, he would have been very confused by this. Which, which proves that it was the devil, and therefore I should score highly in the category of devilry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's high devil. It's five out of five for devilry. I think it should be six out of five. Uh, my final category, amount of horse. Not five out of five. It's a full horse. Uh, the entire horse. It's the entire horse. Five out of five. Good. Or should it be one? Because it is one horse. One whole horse. I didn't say amount of horses. <laughs> I said amount of horse. Yeah. Full five. Congratulations. Thank you. I, I gallop away on just a leg. <laughs> just like a pogo. I just, like a, I just oh. pogo out. And there's like blood spurts on each one. It's only macabre <laughs> pogo in incident. You've been listening to Lawmen. The Lawmen are James Shakeshaft and Alistair Beckett King. Please subscribe, rate, review, and recommend to a friend. You can tweet us at lawmenpod or email us at contact at lawmenpodcast.com to suggest stories from your area. Lincoln Imp.
uh, where's Link? Oh, this some East Midlands this is isn't Lincolnshire. It? This next tale, uh, it's from Lincolnshire, specifically Lincoln, specifically Lincoln Cathedral in Lincoln. I think you've given away quite a lot there. Yeah. 